Hello everyone. It's Sunday morning. I have a little time to kill, so I thought I'd make a follow-up video to show you how to create thousands of users and upload them into a WordPress blog uh, as a follow-up to the video, the last video I created here, demonstrating how to create a members-only blog and enroll thousands of users. Uh, in that video, I showed you the plugins to use to do this with, but I didn't go into detail about how to actually create the file to upload and I've had a couple of people email me and send me uh, Twitter direct messages saying that they've tried this but they didn't have any luck getting the users uploaded. So I'll spend a few minutes here showing you how to do that. So if you want to see how to create the members only blog and get sort of an intro as to how to create and upload these users, you can watch the previous video with this name. Uh, and in this one I'll just solely concentrate on how to get those users created and uploaded. So we'll start off here with a blank blog and go into admin and get the plugin that we're going to use in order to upload those users. Uh, so we'll add new and we're going to search for a plugin called add multiple users and we'll install that and activate it and then once we install and activate go to your users tab and you'll see add multiple users menu. Select that and then you have several ways that you can add users here using this plugin. Uh, the first thing let's do is go to settings. I covered this in the previous video so I won't go into detail. Uh, we're going to uncheck send each new user a registration notification email. Uh, I don't want to do it because obviously I'm creating fictitious accounts here. But you also might want to think about not doing this if you're going to create thousands of accounts. Uh, you might uh, run into some issues if you try to send out thousands of email messages from your web host. And we'll also uncheck this that says email me a complete list of user account details. I don't need that. I'm going to create that myself anyway. We'll leave check to validate email and uh, that's a good thing. I'll show you what that will do for you. And then we're going to leave the other two as is. Uh, here on the user role, uh, if you're not going to set a user role in your CVS file, then you can uh, come here and just select a default role for everyone. Here I'm going to leave it at set individually just so I can show you how to set those roles in the CVS file if you want to. Uh, but you could leave that out of the CVS and pick one here for everyone. Uh, and then we don't need to worry about to customize the new user email because we're not going to send one and save those options. Those are our basic settings. Now you can look around at the other settings if you want but the one that I'm interested in here is the CSV text upload. And I think every now and then I call it CVS. I don't know why. I guess I have pharmacy on the mind. But if you hear me say CVS, I mean CSV, comma separated file. Uh, so here's where you upload your comma separated file of users or text file. But obviously before we upload, we have to create that file. So when we create this file, we need to create it with seven variables. And it needs to be a username, password, email, role, first name, last name, and website. And they need to be in that order. And here it shows you a good example of a formatted CSV file and then some bad examples. Uh, here it has all seven variables. So here it shows you one with just five variables, but there's still places for the seven. There's just a double comma you can see here showing that the passwords have been excluded and that the role has been excluded. Uh, but we're going to look at creating one with all seven variables. So let's go see how to create the file. Now this is the part that trips a lot of people up if you're not used to working with uh, Excel or whatever you use to create your comma separated file. But it's really not that hard once you get accustomed to it. So I just went out on the web and searched and found a file from a school district that had thousands of teacher names and uh, lots of information about the individuals as far as mailing address. Lots of places have to make this stuff available to the public. So I'm just going to use this as an example. Uh, the thing that trips up a lot of people is that when you get the information for account creation you never really know how it's going to be formatted in the file. So here for example I have a name which I'm going to need for first name last name but the entire name is in one column and there's no standard it seems. There's a first name middle name last name and then if you scroll down some others have just a first name middle initial last name uh, and if you look at some others, then there's a first name, middle initial, last name, and other names. So this makes it a little difficult 
at times to format this and pull out first name, last name like you want. But I'll show you a couple techniques to get that done. A lot of information in this spreadsheet we don't need. So what I usually like to do is just go in and clean up a little bit uh, with what I do need and what I don't need. I don't need any of the mailing addresses. I'm going to keep the first name and so forth. Um, I don't need the city. I don't need most of this information. So I'm just going to delete it out. Uh, now they did come here and pull out last name for us. So that's good. I'm going to keep that. That just reduces the amount of work I have to do on this full name here to get the first name separated. So I'll keep the last name and I'll delete the rest. So really all I'm ending up with here is just a full name and then a last name. Now I've got to have, obviously for WordPress, I've got to have a username, a password, an email address, a first name, a last name, and a role. The other things we can probably figure out pretty easily. So the first thing let's do is let's get first and last name. That'll be the easiest thing to do. I'm just going to insert a few columns here to work with. And then select column A that has all of the, the full name in it. And we'll go to Data, Text to Columns, leave it at Delimited. And then we're going to have a space delimiter. It's going to break apart the text in this column based on where spaces are. So we'll do that. Click Next. We're going to set the results to text and finish. So now we have our name broken out. And since we're fortunate enough to have already been provided the last name broken out, that makes it really easy for us. Then I can just come here and delete all of these columns. And now we have a good first name, last name. Now if you didn't have that last name broken out and all we had was the full name in one column, then you could still use the text of columns, but you would see that you're going to have some issues that you have to deal with. Let me just back out here a little bit just to show. Notice that you would have some where you would have first name, middle name, last name, and then you have some where you have first name, last name here, and then you may have some other ones like this to where you have first name, middle initial, last name, which is probably hyphenated. So if those last names weren't already broken out for us, we'd have a lot more work to do here to clean this up to get a good first name, last name. I'm not going to spend the time to go into how to do that. There are lots of good tutorials on YouTube already to show you how to do this. So just search for them if you have that uh, situation to where you need to break those out. So that's how we use the text to columns feature in order to help us get that. That's a very handy feature. You can use it for lots of stuff. We're going to use it more here. Um, so we'll go back now and I just like to keep things a little bit neat. We'll auto fit column, first name, last name. So there are two of our seven. Um, next one we're going to need, we'll go ahead and work on, will be um, an email address. For an email, now hopefully you're lucky enough in the data that you get to have email addresses for everyone. Uh, if not, uh, and you need to create them, and if everyone is in a, the same school, or the same school district, or same organization, or whatever that has a standard email, then you can create emails for people if you know the convention used in that organization. Or it could be that you just want to create a temporary email address for people, uh, and then allow them to change their email address once you communicate to them however you're going to communicate with them uh, what their login is, their username and password. And I'll show you a couple techniques to do that. Let's first assume that we know the convention for email. Let's assume that the email in the organization is first name dot last name at school district dot net or whatever. Uh, so to get that, we can use the concatenate feature in Excel. So I'm just going to highlight the I'm going to highlight the cell to the right of our first person, and we'll go up to our formula bar, and we're going to type equals concatenate. And then we're going to format our formula here in order to produce that email address. So let's say, for example, it's first name. We'll select first name. And then it's dot. So we'll go comma to separate that variable. What is our next piece of information is the dot. So we're going to put that in quotes, just like that. Not a comma, but a dot, comma. And our next piece of information is the last name. So there's the first name dot last name and then we're going to go comma and then in quotes will be the rest of our email address and let's assume it is at your school district dot net close the comma and hit enter now I have Laurie Luca Luca at your school district dot net I have her email address now it's a simple matter of 
selecting that one and grab in the lower right corner of the cell left click and drag down and if you notice when you do that then it will produce those email addresses for everyone so we're just going to do that for all of our individuals here now that we're done you can see that we have first name last name and email address for 65,536 individuals uh, but one thing that we can quickly see here at the bottom is that there are some duplicates in this file as well. So that's something that we're going to want to handle at some point here is to check our file for duplicates and we'll uh, eliminate those duplicate and we'll take care of that here in a second. Okay, so now we have our email accounts. So here let's clean up a couple things. This is first name, last name, email. But what we have here is uh, still just a formula. And I don't want to keep this as a formula. I want the values themselves. So another handy tip or handy tool in Excel is that I can take that entire column, copy it, come over to D, paste special, and then say paste values only. and Click OK. And now what I've done is instead of having the formula that's creating that, here I actually have it as the value itself. Okay. So at this point I could delete there and now I have values. Okay, There are a couple of other things in these emails though that's going to cause us issues. I'm going to leave them for now. But uh, if we scroll down here, uh, notice here this Catherine.Callahan space Jonas. Uh, space isn't going to work out well. We're going to get an error uh, when we try to upload this to, to WordPress. It, it's not going to see it as a valid email. If we look here, there's the uh, apostrophe and O'Connor that's going to show as a non-valid email address but I'm going to leave those for now just to show you uh, how you can see and using that plugin when you upload these into WordPress how you can see where your errors are uh, that you may be able to come back and fix so we won't fix them now but we'll come back and fix them later the other thing we can go ahead and fix now if we want though is to clean up any duplicates because we have um, a unique variable here now with these emails. So what we'll do is go to data, remove duplicates, and we'll tell it the duplicate here, we just need the email, that should be a unique value. Uh, my data does have a header row so it's not including that, and click OK. And if you notice here it removes 16,000, over 16,000 duplicate values and found 49,503 unique. So that's good. Did a lot of cleanup there on duplicates. Uh, so now instead of the 60 some odd thousand, I have 49,500. And notice Joanne Sutton is only there once now. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this and figure out then uh, how we will create a username for our individuals. Um, so you figure out what convention you want for a username, but a good one might be uh, the uh, individuals first name dot last name or you might want first initial last name or whatever so what I'm going to use for a username here is the individuals first part of the email address first name dot last name and so we can get that just like we did earlier uh, using this text to column I'm going to copy the email again paste it here and then we'll use that with the text to column delimited next and this time we'll use the at symbol as the delimiter and then notice it splits off the first part from the last part of the email using the at as the delimiter next we'll have the results be text and finish so here I don't need this we'll go back and delete it and now I have something that I can use for a person's username. But as I look through here at this point I'm just thinking on the fly. I haven't done this in a few weeks so I'm remembering that it is going to cause a problem. Uh, if I try to do a username Catherine.Callahan space Jones that's not going to be good or a username with these apostrophes and so forth. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, clean that up now. I said I'd clean it up later but let's go ahead and do it now. Let's delete these usernames and go back so this is typically what happens when I work on anything. I go through and I try it and I make a hundred mistakes until I get it right. So let's just consider that a mistake. I won't cut it out of the video. I'll show you that I'll show you that uh, even people who do this a lot like I do, 
You know, we make a lot of mistakes as we go. It's never anywhere near as perfect as it might seem on a short video that someone creates. So anyway, we know that we have some things in here we need to take out, like this space. So how are you going to deal with spaces? You need, need to just think what your standard's going to be. So I'm going to decide here. The way that I'm going to deal with spaces in an email address is by using a dash, replacing spaces with dashes. So easy way to do that. Select your column first, and then go to Replace. Find what? Say Find All Spaces, and replace with dash. Replace all. That cleaned up nearly 800 uh, emails there. So if we look down now just to check what really happened there, now I have a dash. And that should work good for me. Now look through your emails and see if there are anything else that you might need to deal with. There, the apostrophes. So how are you going to deal with apostrophes in emails? You'll want to know, obviously, how your organization deals with these things so you can apply the same standard. I'm just going to assume that apostrophes are just removed and they're not replaced with anything. So I'll highlight that column again, replace, and we're going to replace all apostrophes with nothing, 130 of them. So now if we look down and see here Odell is now just Odell with nothing in between. So you might want to scan through your emails just to see a few of them, just to see if there's anything else weird that sort of jumps out at you that you might need to address. Ours look pretty good. Okay, so now that we have that, and I know how I want my usernames, now we'll go back to what we did before. We'll copy, paste special, values only. Really didn't need to do that, but that's okay. It doesn't hurt. Um, go to data, text to columns, delimited, at symbol, finish. And then we'll delete this. And then here we have username. Okay, so we're getting there. We have our first name, last name, email, username. Uh, another thing we need is a role. Uh, that's going to be pretty simple. Uh, we could have, remember, either included the roles in the comma separated file or we could have uh, set a standard role for everyone and then not added anything here. So let's just assume that we want everyone to have the subscriber role. Uh, we could come here and type subscriber and then just make sure that we copy that down for everyone. Okay, And that serves the purpose there. But what I'll do here is I'll say that I'll assume that we're going to set that in the in the plugin and I'll show you how to leave that blank. You'll still need a heading for role, but we're going to leave that blank here in the CVS file and set it at the plugin. So here for role has nothing in it. Let's go back to our site here and under settings we're going to say we want everyone that we enroll to have the subscriber role. Okay, okay so the next thing, let's uh, think about password and passwords now. Uh, you could set a password that's the same password for everyone and have them change it the first time they log in. I don't think that's a good practice. Uh, or you could set everyone a unique password. And then when you communicate to them what their username is, you simply communicate what their password is as well. So if you wanted to set everyone the same, obviously you know how to do it. Type in whatever it's going to be and paste it down. We're going to set unique passwords here and we'll do that by using the randomize feature, random number feature in Excel. So we'll go equals, rand, and we'll go rand between. And let's say that we want to have a password that is between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers. We format it like that and hit enter and then we'll get a random number here between the 5 and the 8 values that I set. And then we simply paste that down just like we did the emails and notice you'll get a random number here. So everyone's password will just be a random string of numbers. And then when they log in they can set it to whatever they want. So let's go ahead and paste that all the way down like we did the email addresses. Okay, so now you can see we have unique passwords for everyone. 
that are letters, or excuse me, a string of numbers between five and eight digits long. One thing though, this is still a formula. So if you look, if we change anything in Excel, hit enter as we're going to be doing a lot, it changes the password. So we don't want that to happen. Uh, these are still being generated by a formula. We need to make those static just like we did the email addresses. So what I'm going to do once we have these created with a formula, it's the same thing we did with the emails. We'll copy this column and paste special and paste values only. And now we can delete that column. Now we just have static values for passwords. They won't be changing. And I think the last thing that we need in our comma separated file is the website. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to leave that blank. I'm not going to try to fill in websites for everyone. When they log in, they can change their uh, profile and put a website in if they want. But we still need that heading for the plugin. Uh, so what we have now are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven variables that we need in order to create this comma separated file. So now we've got to have them in this particular order that the plugin calls for, and I didn't necessarily create them in that order. So let's look. We've got to have uh, username first. So it's got to be username, password, email, role, first name, last name, and website, just like here. So let's go back to our spreadsheet. We'll insert some columns here to work with. We've got to have username first. We'll just drag username over to be first. Password, email, role, first, last, and then website. Okay, we'll do a little cleanup here. And it looks like we have everything. Now, before I save this as a comma separated file, I want to go into role, highlight the entire column, right click, and say clear contents just to make sure that I don't have any stray characters or spaces or anything there. And then I'll type roll again because these need to be empty blank. Uh, and I'll do the same thing with website. Right click, clear contents, and then retype website. And all I'm doing here is just cleaning up just to make sure that I don't have any stray characters or anything uh, in that area. So now everything is formatted the way it should be. I'm going to first off save this as an Excel and then I'm going to go in and save it as my comma separated file. So you save in Excel, you go to save as other formats. And I'm going to save it as the uh, CVS DOS and we'll just call it accounts one and save. Yes, I know, it's not completely compatible, but that's okay. Close. And now I should have on my desktop this CVS file here with only the information in it that I need. I'll right click and open it with Notepad++ just to look at it and make sure it looks good. And it looks pretty good. I'm seeing the names with the commas in the right place. Nothing looks sort of out of the ordinary here. So let's give it a shot here at uploading then to our site. We'll go to Users and Multiple, CSV Upload, Browse, and we'll find our file. We call it Accounts 1. Oops, was that the CVS or the Excel? Let me see. Yep, Accounts 1 CSV and Upload. And here it shows us how it's going to look. Everything looks good. Uh, it suggests that you skip this create user information form. If you have lots of accounts that you're creating here, more than 100. Uh, so we'll do that and we'll add users. And the error in one here, it looks like this is just trying to upload the header role. Uh, instead. So that's all that means. So if you look down through here, I'm getting no errors. Now, had I not gone back in and corrected these email accounts by removing the spaces and the apostrophes and so forth, then when it tried to create those accounts, you would have seen errors for those as well. But as I scroll down through here, it's showing creating the accounts and I'm having no errors in the creation. So that's good. Uh, if any of them here are red, just look and see what the error uh, might be. Uh, but one thing that you're going to see here, I'm going to let this run for a minute, it's up to a thousand already, uh, is that this is probably going to time out long before it creates the 49 or so thousand users that we need. So we'll let it run and see when it does stop and then I'll show you how to fix that problem. 
Okay, as you can see here, it's still running, and it's up to 2,500 or so users, and it hasn't timed out yet. Typically, it would time out around 1,500 or so has been my experience. So what that did is reminded me the way that I created this test blog was I just copied it from another one that I'd used. So I had already made the correction in the source code of the blog to keep it from timing out. So let me show you what you do in order to keep this from timing out if it doesn't create all your users. Uh, if you go to your source code, your WordPress source code, and I'm just using this on a local copy of XAMPP on my computer here, and it's called WordPress 3. Uh, and go to the your WP config file, open it in a text editor. This is the config file in the blog that we're actually creating accounts on now. Uh, I've entered a I've entered a variable here just below DB collate. You can put it anywhere, but this is a good place to put it. Disables the timeout feature built into WordPress. So if yours is timing out before all the accounts are being created, then open your WP config file, put this variable in set time limit to zero, make sure it's formatted exactly like you see here, and save it. And then that will keep it from timing out, or should keep it from timing out, and allow all the accounts to be created. So if we go back and look, uh, this is still running along nicely, and there are 4,300 users created. Now we have 49,000, so it'll probably take it a good 15 minutes or so to create all these accounts. So I'm just going to pause the video and let it finish creating the accounts, and then we'll go back and take a look at them. Okay, I stepped away to do a little work, but it looks like it's done. I think it took it maybe 30 minutes or so, and there's 49,504 users created. So if we go look at our users now, we should see the 49,500 users, and they're all subscribers, uh, all in here, and everything should work well. Now, this obviously is uh, just one example of the way to do this, uh, how you create these names and how you create that comma-separated file. It's really going to depend on what information you have and how it's formatted, so I doubt that this will be exactly a replica of what you have, but it should give you some ideas about how to create those accounts. So hopefully this was helpful for you.